You mentioned politicians are going to have to tell the truth to the American people. As far as I know, there's only one person in office so far doing that, and of course that's Ron Paul, but there's a lot of talk about maybe you joining him. What's uh, what's happening with your potential race against the man I always call Crook Dodd? Yeah, well, before I can run against uh, Dodd, I have to run and beat several Republicans who are vying for that slot. Most recently now we have another candidate who is supposedly mulling it over, but I have it on good authority that she has decided to run, and that is Linda McMahon, the wife of Vince McMahon and the CEO of the World Wrestling Federation. And apparently she's told reporters that she's willing to spend $25 million of their money on this campaign. So that's a lot of cash. That's certainly a lot more than I'm willing to spend personally, and I'm probably it's probably more than I'm going to be able to raise. So she'll be able to spend a lot of money as well as the other front people that are in the race. But I don't see how putting, uh, you know, the head of the World Wrestling Federation in the Senate is going to make much difference. I mean, I think that she's not a politician, and she's got that in her favor. But, you know, she's a promoter, and in many case, in many ways, wrestling is a lot like politics, because the whole thing is, you know, is a fraud. You know, in a wrestling match, you've got two people that are trying to kill each other in the ring, but it's all fake, and behind the scenes, they're best buddies. And that's very similar to what happens in politics, where you have the Democrats and Republicans pretending that they're, you know, mortal enemies and that they have major differences. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they they agree on practically everything, and they're all buddy-buddy. But what we need is somebody, I I think we need a non-politician. I do not think that our problems are going to be solved by politicians. The politicians created the problems, many of them don't understand the problems, and all they will do is make them worse. I think we do need to bring in some outsiders to get some fresh ideas and some fresh perspectives, and people who don't want to necessarily be in Washington. I don't think career politicians could make the difficult choices, because it endangers their career. We need people who have other careers who will go to Washington and do the right thing without regard to how it's going to affect their future re-election prospects. Uh, because if your if your ultimate goal is getting reelected, it's very difficult to deliver the bad news to the people that you hope will reelect you. So, and I and I do think that this is a major major problem. You know, on television the other day, you know, one of the anchors asked me if you know, isn't it true that the Fed can just step on the brakes, you know, before it's too late? And I said, you know, I think the time to step on the brakes is long past. We just got to brace for impact right now. And right now we're not doing that. You know, we don't have anybody even understand what the impact is going to be, let alone uh, bracing for it. So I think we've got to get ready, and we have to know uh, how to, you know, what we need to do to be able to rebuild the economy. And I think it's such an important thing. I think the elections of 2012 are going to be so critical to whether this country can survive economically or not, whether we can ever return to uh, what we used to be or even what we are now, and if we're, if we're just going to be a, a, a giant banana republic the way a lot of the countries on the other side of Central America. you know, And, and, and it very well could be that the world will look at the Americas kind of together. Maybe the only viable economy uh, will be Canada, although you never know. I mean, there's stuff going on down in, in Argentina and Brazil. I mean, maybe the fortunes of the Americas will shift and the real wealth will be on the su- southern part of the continent and not, and not up here. But if we really want to, to do the right thing, then we've got to change Washington, and it's got to change soon because we are running out of time. And so that's the reason that, that I would disrupt my, my career. And most of the other people, in fact, all the other people who are running in Connecticut are either successful businessmen who are basically now retired and looking for a new challenge or who are simply bored and just want to be in the Senate because it's an ego thing or career politicians who only know one thing, and that's how to, how to, how to get elected. I'm different in that I am still in the peak of my career. And, you know, it is certainly not a good career move for me to retire at the age of 46 from a vibrant, growing business to go to Washington. But it's something that I am willing to do based on how high I think the stakes are. And, you know, we have raised uh, quite a bit of money, you know, without even running. I'm I'm almost at about $900,000 raised uh, on my website, uh, shiftforsenate.com. I think I've raised more than the announced candidates, and I think if I do announce and I do, you know, actual fundraisers, I haven't even done a fundraiser yet, and I have a more coordinated method, I think I can raise a lot more money. But if anybody is listening to this 
and they want me to run and they want me to have a, a, a good chance of winning, they should go to the website, you know, shipforsenate.com and contribute as much as they can. If for some reason I don't run, I'm returning all the contributions, so, you know, don't have to worry about that since I'm not actually a candidate yet. But if I do become a candidate, which is very likely, I mean, it's more likely than not, you know, the more money I raise, the more bang in the media I'm going to get when I make that announcement because money talks in, in politics and in the media. And if I've raised a lot of money, that's going to raise a lot of eyebrows and that's going to get me some extra coverage and it's going to make it easier. Because in order to win this campaign, you know, you mentioned Ron Paul and he was able to raise a lot of money, but I don't think he ran a good campaign. And part of that might have been because he knew he really couldn't win. And so I don't think he, he ran to win. I think he ran... Uh, to spread his message, and I think he was very successful in that, and a lot of people woke up. But I'm running to win if I run, and so I want to make sure that I win. I want to make sure that the money that people give me is not wasted. So, And in order to have a well-run campaign, it's going to require professional campaigners, and they cost money, and i got to hire them. And I know I'm going to get a lot of volunteers, and i got to organize them, and i got to spend a lot of money on media, and i got to buy New York media to get the Fairfield County market, and it's expensive, expensive media. So it's going to be a, an expensive race. And so if people really think I can make a difference and want me there, they need to uh, make contributions themselves. I mean, I'll, I'm going to spend some of my own money, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not the, the McMahon's. I don't have uh, $25 million lying around that I don't care about. Peter, tell us about the economic effects if Obama gets his terrible health care plan through. Well, I mean, the economy is already a disaster, you know, with or without the health care. So at this point, we're just talking about extra nails in our economic coffin. But the whole thing is absurd for the Congress and the president to fail to comprehend the gravity of the situation that we're in right now, to think that the U.S. government, which is already broke, can afford another massive government program. I mean, look at the complete failure of Medicare. I mean, Medicare is costing well over 10 times, maybe 20 times what they initially budgeted. And now they want to basically expand that program and, and make it even bigger. You know, I just got my health insurance bill to renew for my company, and the year-over-year increase was 18%. I mean, what else, what goes up at 18% a year? I mean, this is insanity. And this is during the biggest recession since the Great Depression, and prices are going up for health care. I mean, obviously the system is broken, but it's not because of the free market. Free markets don't raise prices like that. Free markets lower prices. There is no uh, precedent for free markets driving prices higher. I mean, if that was the case, nobody would, would, would want them. The reality is... The free market is the best way to keep prices down. It's government that keeps prices rising. Anytime it gets its way into a market and distorts and interferes with the market mechanism, it destroys quality and runs prices out of control. We see it in health care. We see it in education. It's any place the government gets its tentacles. And what we've got to do is, is get, get government out of this, get the market back in so that we can bring these costs under some control. Peter Schiff, thanks so much for being with us this morning. And mention your website again. If you want to support my potential candidacy for the U.S. Senate, if you want to sign up to be a volunteer, if you want to donate money, there that, that website is shiftforsenate.com. Peter, thank you. Thanks, Luke.